making sure that this stream is working. Don't want to start talking and then there'd be technical difficulties. to be talking today about what happened last week uh, because part of the part of the session uh, got cut off so uh, just give me a second here as I change this comments on the session overall uh, and then and, and another uh, broadcast in a minute but um, want to go back let me get on the right screen here uh, and this is unfortunate that you uh, that this uh, part got cut off because this is a part of the adventure that is very important. Um, so, let me get this all squared away here. I think we're good. So anyway. Welcome to uh, my session 12 uh, part 2 recap uh, if you watch the session either live or on vodcast you saw that the session did cut off uh, at the break so I'm going to talk about a little bit what happened after the break because that was the most important part of the session uh, and you missed it so after the break they finally got Ravona who finished her 8 hour uh, uh enriching the soil with plants spell i don't know what it's called but um she enriched the soil with for the plants finished that came down into uh the basement forge where the characters had discovered the armory and she cast her detect magic spell and she discovered that uh there was magic in two places one there was magic um let me get this thing there was magic in the axe that this statue was carrying. And then there was magic in something uh, on the other side of the wall. So they uh, decided that they wanted to try to get to whatever it was on the other side of the wall. So the uh, screw comes eventually after some other... some unsuccessful attempts to find any type of switch or way around screw comes behind the statue and smashes it with his hand anvil which of course triggers uh, an anti-theft uh shield guardian that gets up and swings his axe uh you know does a little twirl thing with his axe and prepares to fight so when I made this encounter, I originally hoped that it was going to be something where, not that the characters would be in danger, but that they would fight something that uh, uh, that would challenge them, and then they would earn the right to use it. Because at the end, that thing in the wall that was emitting a ma uh, magical signal, that was uh, the Shield Guardian's control necklace. Well... Let's just say the fight did not happen according to plan. And the reason that is, is because, uh, and if you've watched any D&D &D or played any D&D &D or, uh, or DM'd anything, uh, any D&D, &D, you know this is true. There's something called action economy. And in action economy, the more people you have against, uh, against one singular creature, the more likely it is that that creature is just gonna be overwhelmed 
It doesn't matter how big that creature is. For instance, spoilers here, if you've watched Critical Role in the latest episode, um, the fight with Vecna, Vecna didn't have a chance because really he was up against eight, you know, seven to eight different people. Actually, it was probably eight. Eight different people at one time that were all pretty pretty powerful individuals. So even though Vecna was incredibly godlike, he also was vulnerable because he had no competent minions to help him out. You know, there were no other spellcasters draining his spells, and every time he would use a spell, Scanlan would be prepared to counterbalance it. So the same principle happened here. There were five, if you count Nino, PCs against this one shield guardian. And it would have been a more interesting fight. I don't think that uh, by any means that it was supposed to be some sort of you know, death, death inducing fight. However, however, it was to be something they were supposed to earn. Instead, Sab uses Ravona to cast Heat Metal. Now, if any of you've played uh, for any amount of time, Heat Metal is a very controversial spell because what it does is, is that you have one constitution save. If you fail that constitution save, which by the way, this a shield guard should not fail a constitution save, okay? So anyway, it did. So you fail the constitution save, you basically be, start to cook inside, uh, the metal starts to cook you. If it's armor, it just starts to cook you unless you take the, uh, the armor off. If you can lose the, ar uh, the item, you know, it does come off of your body. If you're holding the item, it burns you and you drop it. That's the thing how it goes. But if you don't take it off, it continues to cause damage. Well, the shield guardian is not going to take off its armor. What is interesting about 5e is that it did not give certain constructs like, say, a shield guardian even resistance to fire damage so that's part one then there's part two of shield guardian then is put into a disadvantage on ability checks and attacks so basically the shield guardian is rendered useless because most of my characters if you look at their sheets and i'll show you this uh, Shane, he has a 18 AC. Screw, Screw has an 18 AC. Sometimes that's enhanced by his magic, so it could be up to 20. Loyal has a 16 AC. Nino, I think, also has a 16 AC. Yes, he does. Ravona. Ravona was more vulnerable, but even she has a 15, and she was outside. So you see right there that I would have to have rolled on disadvantage a 15 on Ravona to hit her. Everything else was above a 16. That's almost impossible to do with a creature like a Shield Guardian, whose um, whose creature uh, what is his plus? His, if you look at it, Shield Guardian, his plus to damage is only plus seven. So he would basically have to roll on a disadvantage. Um, yeah, he'd have to roll a nine on a disadvantage. It's not impossible, but he'd have to roll a nine on a disadvantage. In reality, most of the time, and I'll show you how I rolled because it was just incredibly stupid. Um, yeah, so I mean, like an eight—that's not gonna hit. 
Um, and that's if you want to hit Loyal or Nino. You're trying to hit Screw or or uh, Shane. It's totally different. I mean, like this one, this one actually would have hit. I think it actually did hit. I think that's the one thing that actually did. No, nope, no, nope, it counted the 14. So the 14, because it adds the bonus in. So 14. No. This was a one. No. Um, going up. And then Screw shrunk him, so the damage even became less. Shield Guarding, I gave him a great axe. Eight. No. That's a one. And yeah, it's just like... It was a futile fight, so basically I just gave it to them at one point. I just said, for the sake of time, you beat this, because it hadn't hit them once. It was getting, you know, at that point it was just a bag of meat, and then, you know, even though it has no meat, um, it was just a bag of hit points, and it was only a matter of time before it was going to expire. So I just gave it to them. It's one of the more uh, disappointing uh, boss encounters up there with the Wraith and the, uh, the Large Crocodile. Both of those encounters ended up being uh, kind of disappointing. So, eventually the wall comes out the niche, uh, comes out of the wall with the Shield Guardian's amulet. Now, they have control of a Shield Guardian. You think, oh wow, that's, that's crazy. Uh, CR level 7, you know, you know, but they don't have control of the Shield Guardian. They have found out really quickly that the Shield Guardian is uh, respects people of higher magical aptitude and will only do what uh, it wants to at this point. Um, of course, Meadow takes the amulet and makes it do just about whatever he wants it to, and then you know they they take it back and it just barely sits in the corner. It does go and sit in the corner. It doesn't do much else. So. Shield Guardian is going to follow them around, but how useful it's going to be is is questionable at this point. But, something interesting for the future. So they come out of the place, and this is where it gets interesting, because Meadow's talking to them about what he found, but while he's talking, during, uh, we remember during earlier in the session, uh, that, is, uh, that uh, was recorded. Uh, earlier in the session, Shane and uh, Loyal go and search the library, and they find uh, what is basically some sort of tome that has a niche in, inside of it that you could put, like, parchment or scroll or something like that. Well, they didn't know what it does, so they're out in the hall, all of a sudden that tome starts vibrating. And if you remember, they put inside of the tome the... Uh, was for lack of better terms arcane scavenger hunt letter that they found and as meadow was speaking it was talking and it started writing what meadow was saying so they try they're like hmm this is interesting and then they asked meadow what it is he's like oh yeah that's that's a tome of uh what did i call it um As a tome of temporary comprehension, and basically what that allows uh, is the reader to understand any language that has a handwriting sample uh, placed within it within for 24 hours. So you can understand the language of whatever handwriting sample that we placed in there for a duration of 24 hours, and then the tome has to recharge. And you can't change languages until the tome recharges um, on an 18 or 20, kind of like uh, I did with their uh, Spore of Enlightenment. Uh, so yeah, and the language is interpreted on the page as if the texts were speaking. Um, so you have to be able to read to be able to, re to to see the text. So they they see that the what he's saying is being written down, and then Meadow gets really defensive, grabs the scroll when he sees what kind of scroll it is, and takes it away and places it in his pocket. Well. I wasn't quick enough to eliminate the scroll from um, from their uh, from their important documents, and so one of them was able to copy the scroll down. Now that doesn't mean that they'll remember as characters, 
but um, and they may get it back. The point is, is that Meadow takes the scroll and then kind of hurries away with it, puts it in his sanctuary, you know, which is off limits, uh, as indicated by the big red X and the do not enter um, <laughs> sign. So he runs off with it and he comes back and then uh, Shane confronts him about who he is. And through that exchange, they discover that Meadow is indeed the author of that scroll, who is none other than Archimedon the Valiant. Um, and that's where the session ends. But the, all that's really important because Meadow being Archimedon the Valiant is important to larger macro things that are going on in the world. Uh, right now, a bit bigger than our um, than our party is able to go through. And so next session will likely go more into that. Um, so yeah, that's what happened after the break. Most of the of the time was taken up with the Shield Guardian um, fight, even though there really wasn't much of a fight at that point. So yeah, there's your a synopsis of that. I'm going to stop streaming this so that I can put this with the other, and then I'm going to come back in about five minutes and do a little... Uh, talk about what uh, what's been going on since the last time I did a video on what's going on and how this whole story arc is leading towards uh, and, and bending towards something bigger uh, in the narrative all right so I'm gonna be I'm gonna stop the stream now and I'll be back in uh, probably about five minutes okay